This is a follow-up video on the Photoshop Generative AI tool. I've been testing to see if it can go beyond its usual application with photographs and see if it can work with illustrations on screen as a result of 10 minutes working with the tool. If you'd like to see how I achieve this, stay tuned for this short tutorial. So I've generated this character using Midjourney and I used the prompt children's book character and illustration style and I prompted for the arms and legs to be stretched out as I found it was easier for the AI to alter. Also for the same reason I've added flat colour and no outline to the prompt to simplify the image. I've left a download link in the comments for Photoshop Beta. In this program you can use the tool Generative Fill by just selecting an area of your design and go to Edit Generative Fill and here you can type the prompt. Using the Generative Fill tool, I selected the upper half of the body and added the text prompt Orange and White Striped Jumper with arms bent and hands on hips. I did specify the collar to be yellow, but it didn't show in the results, so I simply copied and pasted the collar from the original design. More manual adjustments like this will be necessary with Photoshop's AI being so new and seemingly focused on photography currently. But as you can see, it's done not a bad job of changing the pose of the character. Next, I prompted for a sitting position with the legs and also specified the denim to keep in the same style of the character. And I prompted for a smile so you can see how it can change the expression. It can be a bit off with the eyes, so I would just recommend copying and pasting them each time. If you want to change the background, you can merge the layers in the layers panel and then wand everything surrounding the character and then prompt for the scene you want. I'm running with the prompt sitting at a beach and you can also see that it's altered the chair to be more suitable for the beach scene. I think with these generated illustrations they could do with some tidying up but I guess it's about personal preference really. Something like it more stylized maybe. If you want to generate multiple illustrations such as birds I would suggest making multiple selections while holding the shift key and then prompting for the birds and this will keep more consistency and better composition. You can add as many or as few elements as you like to the design. I'm just prompting for anything you'll find on the beach to add interest to the image. It's also worth mentioning that if you want to remove an element from the image, such as this boat, you can just type the words remove and then the object you want to remove in. You can make adjustments to the elements of previous generations you made, such as this beach hut which came with the background. If the illustrations aren't coming out how you like, or they seem to be more photographic, it's worth prompting again, or changing the prompt, or just simply adding the word illustration to the prompt. After a few attempts at changing the legs, I decided to use the original material and just copy the legs over. This is just something that you'll have to do with some elements to keep the accuracy and consistency in the style. But this tool definitely is useful for the body shell of the illustration, such as the sitting position and that the character is in. So you can extend the image using the crop tool and then fill it with the generative fill tool. You don't need the text prompt for this as the AI is content aware and it will imagine the rest of the image in the same style whilst considering all the elements of your design. Also, I should mention the fact that you can use the arrow keys on the generative toolbar to switch between the different options that the AI has generated. I realize here that I should have selected multiple areas of the sky to generate the clouds, but I'm just copying and pasting it here. I also prompted for a spade in the sand and the handle didn't come out, so I just selected the top of the spade and prompted for the handle. It's pretty impressive that it can work out the correct perspective of the spade and keeping the same style and colour. So here's the final image. If you have any questions about the video just drop them in the comments and if you like the video drop us a like or subscribe and see you next time.